Hello everyone, Gecko here. I love vehicles and today we're going to be meeting loads of emergency vehicles. Emergency vehicles are there to save people who are hurt or who need some help. Let's learn all about them and the brave people who drive these vehicles. First, let's meet an amazing fire truck. Fire trucks are used all over the world to help firefighters put out fires and rescue people who are trapped in hard to reach places. We're going to meet two different fire trucks today and we get to meet the brilliant crew members of Lim Fire Station. These amazing fire trucks and firefighters are experts at, you guessed it, putting out fires. They use these super long wiggly hoses, a bit like what we see in the garden, but super powerful. And look, they even have special masks that protect them from the heat. This is Jay, and he's the watch manager, which is what they call the leader of the team. Firefighter Hill, door number four. Also, I'd like to welcome uh, Gecko, uh, who's going to learn to be a firefighter for the day. Thanks for having me, White Watch. Well, look who's here. Blue and Green Mechanical have come to learn about fire trucks too. Make sure you two stay out of trouble, please. This is Laura and Ellen. They're both firefighters in White Watch. What are you doing now, Laura? Well, Gecko, we're getting ready for the starter shift. This involves getting all our kit out so that we're ready for any emergency that we might come across. So as you can see, Ellen's put her boots out ready. She's also got both the jackets, a helmet and her gloves. So she's ready for any emergency we might come across. Speed is always of the essence, so it's important that it's all laid out properly. Everyone, meet Andy. He's the driver of the fire truck. He's making sure everything is okay for the next emergency call out. But what is an emergency call out? Well, that's when people ring up and tell the firefighters they need help. And remember, it's very important to check that the truck's lights are working properly. They need to flash really brightly when the truck leaves the station to let people know help is coming. I love this fire truck. Do you know why? It's because there's so many secret places to store the amazing life-saving equipment. Look, Ellen and Laura are checking the hydraulic cutting equipment. These are like a big pair of scissors. But instead of cutting through paper, they cut through metal. Now Mechanical is going to have to stop messing around. This isn't a place for messing around, guys. We don't want to end up rescuing you, do we? Once Andy and the gang have checked that the truck is OK, Laura and Ellen need to make sure their breathing apparatus works safely. This is what they use when it gets really smoky inside a building that's on fire. It's very important that they can breathe clean air. Psst! Guess what, everybody? There's actually more than one fire truck in this fire station. This one here is called the ALP, which stands for Aerial Ladder Platform. Should we all say it together? Aerial Ladder Platform. Now, the team use this ALP truck when they need to rescue people from places that are just way too high for the ladder. Wowzers! 
It sounds like someone's in trouble. Come on, Gecko, get your gear on. We've got a job. That's one of those emergency calls that we talked about a minute ago. Remember? All of the important stuff we need to know about the rescue comes through on this piece of paper. OK, all three appliances, mechanical, stuck at height, in limb. Oh no, it sounds like the mechanicals are in trouble. We'd better go and rescue them. Now that we've got our kit on, it's time to move out. Oh dear, it looks like those silly mechanicals are stuck at the top of that tower and can't get down. We'll have to use the ladder to go all the way up there and get them. Look at this amazing teamwork. The crew all work together to get this ladder up as quickly and as safely as possible. Oh dear, it looks like the ladder isn't quite high enough to reach the mechanicals. Hmm, now, what can we use instead? That's right, bring in the help! To make sure the help doesn't wobble, Andy and James use these controls to move these things called jacks out of the side of the truck. They look like metal legs, and they stick out and lift the truck off the ground. Wow! That's really heavy, but these jacks are so strong, they stop the Alp from falling over. Whoa, look at that! It's got super strength, like super mechanical. Once the Alp is stable, which means it won't wobble, Andy jumps into the operating seat. That's the one that works the machinery. James is so brave. Look, he's going up in the cage to rescue the mechanicals. Now, because he's going up very high, he clips himself on using this harness, so he can't fall off. A harness is a bit like a belt you wear around your trousers. When you fasten it, your trousers don't fall down. OK, here goes. Up, 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 up into the sky! James is now in control of the cage, and he can move up, down, left, and right with these joysticks. Almost there. Hold on, mechanicals. We're coming to save you. Gotcha. Phew. I'm glad those mechanicals are safe. Thanks, James and Andy. OK, Mechanicals, I hope you learnt your lesson there. You shouldn't be climbing up towers and being silly, because we've got other people to rescue, OK? It seems Blue Mechanicals gone missing. 
But luckily for us, the brilliant Cheshire Police Force are going to help us find him. Police officers are very brave, and their job is to keep everyone safe and sound. This is Scott. He's a police officer, and he's going to be driving us around today in this amazing police car. Hey, Gecko. When did you last see Blue? I haven't seen him for a few hours now. I'm really worried. Hop in, Gecko, and we'll radio the control room to see if they've had any sightings of him. Scott can use his police radio to talk to other officers when they're far apart. There's a whole team of people behind the scenes who are there to help Scott do his job. Control from Hotel Tango. Have you had any sightings of Blue Mechanical who's gone missing? Yes, we've had a report of him. Sending you his location now. Over. Phew! That sounds like good news. I do hope Blue is all right. Before we set off, Scott presses this button to turn the flashing lights and siren on. And away we go. The sirens and flashing lights are used to help cars all around see and hear the police coming. It's so drivers can get out of the way and let the police through. And look here, they even have a pop-up sign in the back asking drivers to slow down. Scott is a traffic officer, which means he drives around in this fantastic police car. But Scott, what exactly does a traffic officer do? Our job on the roads as a traffic officer is to stop people doing dangerous things in their cars and their motorbikes and trying to keep people safe on the roads. Sometimes Scott and the team have to chase naughty people or get to those who need help. So this car is really fast. And because the police are here to keep us all safe, they're even allowed to go through red traffic lights during emergencies. Look, there he is. Blue, we were so worried about you. Are you okay? Blue, it's very important never to go off by yourself. You might get lost. It can also be very dangerous going this close to the water without a grown-up. Remember, you can't swim, Blue. Come on, Blue, hop in. We'll give you a lift down to the station. Thank goodness Blue's safe. These amazing cars that helped us find Blue take a lot of looking after too. When we get back to the station, let's head round to the maintenance unit and take a look. A maintenance unit is a bit like Gecko's garage, but this one just looks after police cars. What do you think, Blue? Pretty cool, huh? Now stay out of trouble whilst I have a look around. Connor's checking the oil. And Pat is changing a tyre. It's important to keep the oil topped up in a car, as it makes things slimy and wet, but not in a horrible gooey way, as it actually helps. See. If things start to go dry, like when we have a sore throat, then lots of engine parts become damaged, and then these ace cars won't work properly. This is Tim, and he's a mechanic here at the police car maintenance unit. Hey, Gecko. What are you doing today, Tim? 
I'll check this vehicle over to make sure it's safe to drive. We'll start by doing the lights. Right, Tim, you've got some lights out. OK, we better fix them. That's better. <laughs> Ouch! Blue, are you okay? <laughs> to get a better look underneath the car, the mechanics can use this really strong hydraulic lift to raise it up. Hey, guys, can you drop it down a bit? I can't see. Okay, can I just send the ramp down? That'll do there. Look, underneath you can see the exhaust system, which is how the car controls lots of things, like how noisy it is and how much fuel it uses. It also carries dirty fumes from the engine towards the back of the car. And see here, these springs are called the suspension. This makes the ride along the road less bumpy for the passengers. Wow! There's just so much cool stuff hidden underneath a car. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. They're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician, and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine. Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button the ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch okay. so that Paul Terry and Terry can amazing. talk to each other. Okay. Yeah, it'll stay really nice. Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. When a call comes in, it's time for Paul and nine, Terry nine, nine, to turn nine, the nine, lights nine. on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the Mechanic to fix the problem. There, that's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? After travelling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty, so this is where they're given a good wash. Blue Mechanical, 
You better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh. Too late. I'm here at the Hoylake Lifeboat Station, where I'm going to go sailing on this huge lifeboat behind me. Lifeboats are very important boats because they are life-saving boats. They rescue people who are in trouble out at sea. And look! This massive tractor is used to take the boat down to the beach and launch it into the sea. Just look at those caterpillar tracks. But the lifeboat wouldn't be any use without the amazing crew that sail her and look after her. Here come the crew now to get ready for launch. These crew members are real life superheroes who give up their free time to save people who are in trouble at sea. Today they're doing a training exercise. Look at the lifeboat coming out of the station now. The tractor is pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Those caterpillar tracks are perfect for travelling along the sandy, muddy beach. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today which can travel on land and sea by floating around on a cushion of air. These huge fans on the back are what pushes the hovercraft along. And it's very, very noisy. Here comes the lifeboat and the tractor. The tractor can go deep into the water to launch the lifeboat smoothly into the sea. The trailer tilts and the boat just slides off. Here we go, we're out at sea. This Shannon class lifeboat can go really fast so that they can get to people in trouble as quickly as possible. This is Andy, he's the coxswain which means he's in charge of the lifeboat today. And this is Matt, the deputy coxswain and driver of the boat. What are you doing now Andy? Now we're going to do a man overboard exercise. What will happen is one of our guys will go in the water now and then we'll pick them up. This brave member of the crew has volunteered to get in the cold water so that the rest of the crew can practice how to pull somebody out again. On the bow! They use a special harness and ropes to pull him out as quickly and safely as possible. Just look at how the crew all work together as a team to rescue him. Do you want to have a look inside the lifeboat? Come on, Andy's going to give us a quick tour. So the first seat we come to is a crew seat or a doctor's seat. So if we have to take a doctor out, the, do the doctor would sit there. Then we've got Alistair sitting here. He's the navigator today. So he's keeping us safe and in deep water. As we come further back, we've got the coxswain's seat. So the coxswain sits in the middle of the boat and he's able to look at everything that's going on around the boat. Alongside the coxswain, we have the mechanic's seat. He's looking after the engines and he has all the controls he needs for, uh, for operating anything we need during the journey out to rescue someone. We've got the radar seat. The radar is a, is a great piece of equipment. The radar will see in the dark or it'll see through fog when, uh, when we can't see anything. And then we have the helmsman's seat. This is where the, the lifeboat's driven from. At the minute, there's no one sitting in here because the lifeboat's getting driven from uh, on deck. Thanks for the tour, Andy. The tractor's waiting for us on the beach, ready to tow the boat back up to the station. Well, uh, Matt, we're about to hit the beach. You better slow down. Uh, Matt. Ah! Oh, ah, we're okay. Ah, I see. 
that was supposed to happen. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. Now the tractor can come along and tow the boat up and onto the trailer. As well as the crew on the boat, there is also a shore crew who make sure that the launch and recovery go smoothly. Wow, that's like magic. The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. A long day at sea, now it's time to head back. But the lifeboat's all dirty and the tractor and tracks. So the crew at the station all wash, scrub and clean. They really look after their rescue machine. It's very important to look after the boat so that she works for a long, long time. The crew take great pride in looking after the lifeboat because they know she's special. The crew are members of the RNLI, which is a charity where kind people donate money to buy equipment, like this beautiful boat. And it's these brave volunteers who go out and rescue people. Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly! On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start. Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa, I can hardly stay on my feet. Red mechanical. Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy 
instead of a real person. The pilots skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done, team! Back at base, the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps, and the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. And as you can see as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here down through the ramp itself off the aircraft into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay, this is the cockpit of the helicopter. There are two pilots. One sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side. These are the controls to fly the helicopter. This one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down. And then there's two pedals down on the floor as well. And that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens. And then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. I'm here at Wigston Fire Station to meet a vehicle that's a really big deal. Hold on to your hats, because here it comes. Woohoo! That is the cutest fire engine I've ever seen. This is the mini fire engine and it's used by the amazing firefighters here to teach children all about fire safety. This is Kane. He's a firefighter and the driver of this mini fire engine. It's got all the usual things you'd expect on board. Flashing lights, a siren and a ladder. All in an itty bitty teeny tiny size. But best of all, it's got plenty of room in the back for children to have fun rides. Look at that! There's a pretend radio for making emergency calls. You can really see just how small the mini fire truck is when it's parked next to its big sister. This fire truck is big and this one is small. Hey Gecko, want to go for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, please. Mini fire truck is powered by electricity. That means it's got a big battery on board that can be charged overnight. It 
It's very easy to drive. Kane just puts his foot on the pedal and steers with the steering wheel. To turn on the flashing lights and sirens, he presses these buttons. Woohoo! We've arrived at the park. Kane, I think these children would like a ride. That's it. Get your special firefighting kit on. Jump aboard. Wow, we can fit loads of children in the back and even one in the front next to Kane. It's very important that you're safe in any vehicle, so the first thing you should always do is put your seatbelt on. This fire engine is so small that it's allowed on roads and footpaths. This is going to be a fantastic ride. Wave hello to everyone. After the ride, Kane teaches the mini firefighters some important fire safety lessons. This one's called Stop, Drop and Roll. Fire is very dangerous and if there's ever any fire on your clothes, you should stop, drop to the floor, cover your face and roll around. I'm back at the Hoylake Lifeboat Station with the RNLI to learn all about their amazing hovercraft. I can't wait to meet the crew and get stuck in. A hovercraft is an amphibious vehicle. Do you know what amphibious means? It means something that can go on land and in the water. This is Chris, and he's today's hovercraft commander. Great to see you, Gecko. Coming into our lifeboat station. It's amazing inside this lifeboat station. There's so many huge vehicles that are all designed to rescue people who are in trouble at sea. Gecko, would you like to join us on a hovercraft training exercise? Oh, yes, please, Chris. To stay safe, warm and dry, the crew have to wear this safety gear. The helmet is actually called a gecko helmet. Can you believe it? It's a real team effort to launch the hovercraft. Push team! The hovercraft is very heavy so a big tractor is used to tow it safely down to the beach. Then, it's all hands on deck to unclip the hovercraft from the trailer and pump up the inflatable sponsons which help the hovercraft float on water. Then the pilot uses the engine to glide back onto the beach. Hooray! Wow! Look at all of these levers and switches. It all looks very complicated. Nick is the pilot and it's his job to fly the hovercraft. To start the engine, Nick turns this key. 
We can't see them, but underneath the hovercraft are two fans, which blow air downwards. This fills the skirt with air, making the hovercraft lift off the ground. Wowzers trousers! The big fans at the back are called the thrust propellers, and these push the hovercraft forwards. When Nick moves this lever, the rudders at the back move. It's these rudders that steer the hovercraft left and right. Nick makes the fans move faster, and the hovercraft glides forwards. Woo, that is amazing! As commander of the hovercraft, it's Chris's job to check all around and give Nick instructions to help him fly the hovercraft safely. It's so fast and it's so noisy. Now I know why these gecko helmets have microphones and headphones built into them. They allow us to talk and listen to each other. It feels like we're floating across the sand. And just like that, we're on the water. This hovercraft is amazing. It's now time for me to hop off and let the crew do their training exercise. The RNLI is a charity set up to save lives at sea. And these training exercises help the team here get ready for real life search and rescue missions. So to be as prepared as they possibly can be, the team practice, practice, practice. Today they're practicing how to rescue someone who is stuck in the mud. Playing in deep mud near the sea can be very dangerous especially if the tide is coming in. Now that's what I call getting stuck in. Tides are the rise and fall of the levels of the sea. This is something that's happening all of the time, which means that if you're stuck in the mud on the beach, the tide might come in and surround you with water. It's very important to respect the water and make sure you check when the tide is coming in to make sure you're safe when you're at the beach. Well done team, another successful training mission. Oh dear, it looks like the mechanicals haven't checked the tide times and they're stranded on this island. It looks like there's a storm coming too. Luckily, the hovercraft is the perfect rescue vehicle. Jump aboard, mechanicals! the hovercraft is. All that whizzing about in the sand and sea is dirty work. Every time the hovercraft is called into action, the RNLI crew take great care to make sure it's cleaned up and ready to be used again. Here in the nice dry lifeboat station is the perfect place for the hovercraft to sleep for the night. I've loved learning all about these amazing emergency vehicles today. Thanks very much to everyone for showing us around. You can watch more videos from me by tapping here. And subscribe to my channel by tapping here. I'll see you again soon. Bye!